Hi there guys, this is Richard, your host, and welcome to another marvelous video. I come in peace. 1990 Alien, explored in detail. And you go in pieces, asshole. Craig R. Baxley's science fiction action flick might have hit the theaters way back in 1990, but it's still quite hard to disregard the one-liners from the movie. In fact, this actually makes one wonder why films like this, especially ones that are jam-packed with such epic one-liners, aren't made anymore. Most of you know that the original title of the movie was Dark Angel. In fact, that's precisely how the movie was intended to be released in the States. Well, here's an interesting trivia that might surprise you. The project was apparently titled Lethal Contact. At least that's what Jonathan Tidor's spec script of 1984 stated. However, the production along with the filming and the international title was Dark Angel, and that's how it was released worldwide, but in due course, the movie title was altered to I Come In Peace to avoid confusion with two other existing flicks from the 20s and 30s that also had the same title, The Dark Angel. Full credits to Triumph Releasing Corporation for renaming the film to what it is popularly known as today. And in spite of a limited theatrical release in the UK cinemas, I Come In Peace eventually became quite the surprise hit, all thanks to some good word of mouth and also the fact that it did pretty well in the video stores there. The movie actually fell under the category of the top 10 rentals and consistently maintained its ranking for many weeks. Co-written by Jonathan Tidor and David Kep, the movie stars Dolph Lundgren, more popularly known as Dolph Lundgren and the 6 feet 5 inches Matthias Hughes, in the leading roles. While Lundgren portrays the role of a rule-breaking vice cop, one who gets entangled in the investigation of a series of mysterious drug-related murders on the streets of Houston, Hughes essays the role of Talek, a gigantic, white-eyed, blonde, bad alien, and also the main antagonist of the movie. An absolute 1990 camp thriller, I Come In Peace not only boasted every cop flick action cliché known to B-movie action purists, but surprisingly it also managed to build a rather comprehensive background of a particular alien race along with the political dynamics on his home planet. It would not be wrong to admit that this movie here is more like a cult favorite, especially amongst all the Lundgren fans out there. And as for Matthias Hughes, he's certainly been most fondly remembered for his role as Talek in the movie. Not only did the latter perform all his stunts by himself, he has even regarded this film as his best experience as an actor. Dearest viewers, gear yourselves up for today's video where we're not only going to talk about the movie, but also explore the alien in detail. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Movie Plot Jack Kane happens to be a Houston police officer, one who will just not let the police system stop him from following his goal of wiping out a gang of white-collared drug dealers who address themselves as the White Boys. The group was responsible for killing Kane's partner in the midst of a sting operation, headed by the savage yet suave. The group disguised their illegal drug trade behind rows of flashy designer suits, high-ranking jobs, and luxury sports cars. With the gang pilfering a freight of heroin from a federal evidence warehouse, they hide the evidence of their involvement by simply blowing up the facility, in turn wounding and killing a multitude of people. This catches the attention of the FBI and Kane is soon assigned a new partner, Special Agent Arwood Larry Smith. The duo probe deeper into the matter and also into the murders of many white boys by some type of a super fast spinning sharp disc. While the bodies are found full of heroin, the real cause of death happens to be some kind of a perforating wound on the forehead. Unbeknownst to Kane and the other cops, the deaths were apparently brought about by an alien called Talek. Talek was extracting something from his victims, but was also being hunted by another alien like him, called Azek. Azek eventually tracks down Talek to a supermarket, where it goes without saying that an intense battle takes place between the two of them. Azek gets mortally wounded and makes it on time to sneak into Kane's car. Meanwhile, Kane and Smith, who are investigating the supermarket massacre, are ordered off the investigation by their superiors. While returning back to the car, the duo bumps into Azek, who explains to them that he is also a police officer but from his home planet. He explains how Talek shoots his targets with an overdose of synthetic heroin and then, with the help of alien technology, extracts the resulting endorphins which is released from the brains of the victims. Talek further synthesizes this into a drug known as Basi, one that's very popular amongst addicts back on his planet. 
Before succumbing to his injuries, Azek also warns them to stop Talek because if he's not terminated, it will result in an invasion of interminable intergalactic drug dealers in search of Barsi and also lead to the end of humanity. With Azek dying, his body gets cremated by itself. Smith, having retained the powerful handgun of Azek, plans to hand it over to his FBI superiors just to prove to everybody that aliens do exist. Although Kane tells him not to trust his superiors, the duo has an altercation and they go their separate ways. Smith hands over the weapon to his boss, Inspector Schweitzer, who then discloses that they not only knew about the aliens, but also have plans of gaining their technological advantages as well as the weaponries of Talek. Schweitzer even tries shooting Smith, but not before getting shot by Kane, who seemed to have arrived just in time to save Smith. Making use of the information that was passed on to them by Azek, they are able to track down Telek to an industrial compound but get ambushed by the white boys who hold Kane accountable for the death of their gang members. The standoff is intervened by Talek, who appears and kills the rest of the white boys before being coerced to surrender, after Smith uses Azek's handgun against him. But in due course, the weapon runs out of charge and Talek tries slaying Kane using his drug harpoon. However, Kane is able to lay his hands on a vial of the Barsi drug, and that leads the duo to engross in a hand-to-hand -hand fight over the vial. The end result is Talek getting impaled on a steel spar, Kane gaining possession of Talek's gun and shooting at the close-by drums of fuel, killing Talek in the consequent blast. Alien from I Come In Peace explained. By now, we all know that the evil alien from the movie is addressed as Talek. The world that he came from is still unknown, but what we are quite certain of is that he did come from an advanced species of aliens. There aren't any second thoughts regarding the fact that he appeared to be energy-based. As in, he and even Azek, the good alien for that matter, did erupt in explosions when they died. Coming back to Talek, he did come to Earth in hopes of minting money. Now, whether he had come to Earth before as well is still a question mark, but he did come to Houston with a very specific plan of action. We're stressing on him giving people excessive doses of heroin, sucking the endorphins released from their brains, synthesizing them into a drug called Barsi, and selling it back at his home planet. Let's not forget the part where he brutally kills all of his victims with a disc. Yeah, you heard that right. Talek begins his journey by killing four heroin dealers with his killer disc, of course, and then pillaging about 90 kilograms of heroin from them. He's seen going on rampages plenty of times in the movie. When we say rampage, we're emphasizing on him often demolishing a large number of cars. While the movie does feature another alien, Azek, the good one who happens to be a police officer in their home planet, Talek managed to secure an upper hand resulting in the eventual death of the good alien. Weapons form a very important part of these aliens here. Talek is seen carrying a massive collection of some very advanced armaments from his home planet. Of course, his primary weapon is the killer disc, one that was actually modified to the human pattern of electromagnetic impulses. This not only made it fly around and seamlessly cut through every living human it could find, but it also continued to do so till it got stuck inside a magnet. Can you beat that? He's also seen in possession of a very large alien handgun, one that quick fires explosives and is quite handy when it comes to destroying cars. Now. Add to all of this a retractable blade on his right arm, which he mainly uses to drain out human endorphins, and on his left hand is his gauntlet that has a large, automatic bladed whip which he mainly used to shoot heroin. Putting further stress on his powers and abilities, Talek boasts augmented strength and intelligence. He's quite an expert when it comes to his weapons. For those of you who haven't seen the movie yet, <laughs> you're in for a surprise. He's quite capable of shooting lasers from his eyes, transforming his legs into tentacles and sticking to the walls too. In case you think that we're exaggerating, no, we're not. Not even the tiniest bit. See the flick for yourself and be the judge. I recreated Dark Angel Part 2 and I'm shopping it around right now uh, as a reunion between Dolph and myself. Is I Come In Peace 2 happening? Well, that was straight from the horse's mouth and you heard him say it. Since the release of the film back in 1990, there have been many attempts to make a sequel. Even Harv Zimmel got the job of writing the script for a part two in either 95 or 96, but apparently that didn't have any of the characters from the first flick. Zimmel's script revolved around a down-on-his-luck police detective, one who's probing deeper into the inexplicable disappearances of people in the coastal California town. He's joined by a female Interpol agent who also seems to be working on the same case. It's eventually revealed that she happens to be an alien who is chasing another female alien, one who is accountable for all the disappearances. While the producers of the movie thought that it was quite a well-written script, they unfortunately could not get the budget for it, and apparently there also seems to be some problems related to the rights with the first movie. 
Of course, Craig R. Baxley was also approached for the sequel, but he denied because of such a shoestring budget. Anyhow, coming back to Matthias Hughes, here's some more information about the sequel. The story has Dolph as the policeman who we all know. He's completely lost his mind as nobody for that matter believes him when he claims that an alien invasion almost happened or may take place again. So, his character gets transferred to Texas, apparently in some small town. He's a lot older, probably 67 years old, and the town sheriff too, who is entirely obsessed with conspiracy theories. Finally, a black site is discovered in Sweden that the Americans have forgotten about. That's where the corpse of Talek is seen hanging, burnt, unrecognizable, along with a bunch of other aliens. Dolls' character soon finds out about it when the monsters escape, posts some kids inadvertently unleashing them. Talek begins his killing spree and that leads to Dolph's character flying from America to Sweden. Of course, everyone wants him to not succeed as the government clearly cannot afford this news to come out, but Dolph does what he has to do eventually. For what's better, Matthias had even taken to his social media account to announce that a sequel was finally in the making. All good things take time. Guess we gotta be patient for this one. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.